You are watching Cold Fuse Gym. HTC was the original Android company. They were creative, innovative, and really had a knack for what the customer wanted at that particular time. Today, HTC isn't doing so well, and they really haven't been for the last three years. Well, what happened? Mainly poor advertising, Medicore batteries, slow software updates, and Samsung. HTC are still kicking, and the HTC One M8 is their latest shot at winning the hearts and the minds of the people. In this video, we'll take a look at what the HTC M8 is all about, and then I'll share a few of my thoughts about it. Sorry, I just had to quickly stop the video here. I'm Australian, right? And a few years ago, we used to have this ad that uh, focused on the word mate, basically. So every time I hear it, I just think of that. HTC Mama Mate. All right, I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Back on topic. Firstly, I'm just going to point out that the specs will be listed across the screen and not read out like usual, for reasons I'll get to later. So a lot of you guys out there would have noticed that the M8 isn't a radical design departure from the M7. You could say there's two reasons for this. Number one, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And number two, it's probably more economically viable to give the top smartphones the S treatment. Instead of HTC spending millions of dollars in research and development, radically changing designs and hardware every year, as a company it kind of makes sense to just bump up the hardware specs and design just enough to make it through another year. But really, who can blame them? You know, looking at the Sony Xperia lineup, the Xperia Z series hasn't changed that much in two years. Yes, there's been improved displays and hardware, but as for the actual design and actual features, not a lot has been going on. The Galaxy S5 was really a Galaxy S4S. There's not really much else to say there. You know, you can just take a look at the differences in the past between the Galaxy S1, Galaxy S2, and Galaxy S3. A few years ago, each and every new flagship phone was radically different from the last. I do understand that as technology improves, it gets harder and harder to shrink things down or optimize certain components. But if you think it's not possible, just take a look at phone manufacturers such as Oppo. Each new device is innovative and brings something new to the table. Alright, so back to the HTC One M8. Does the HTC One M8 fall under the category of the S treatment? Well, the HTC M8 is a similar story, but it's not that extreme. For example, HTC has done a lot of things right this time. Apart from the gold colour and the increased roundness of the corners, the industrial design language on this phone is great. The metal unibody construction has now been stretched over the sides, all the way up to the screen itself. So in this video, I'm being 100% honest and I'm just telling you my thoughts. There's a couple of things about the design that do annoy me ever so slightly. If you look at this picture for a while, you'll begin to notice something. There's a bit of wasted space on this phone. The phone doesn't actually have to be that tall. There are no hardware buttons along the bottom strip of that phone anymore, so the HTC logo could have actually been reduced or even moved to the top of the phone to save space. In saying that, HTC deserves some credit, they're still thinking and they're being innovative, and the dot case is a sign of that. In all honesty, it's leaning towards the gimmick side a little bit, but it is an interesting idea and concept for an accessory. And the extra functionalities such as receiving calls, alarms, weather updates, and swiping down to access voice controls aren't so bad. HTC has also dug deep and aimed to fix those battery issues that have been plaguing their devices for years. For a start, they put a slightly bigger battery in there and a special power saving mode. This mode kills everything apart from phone calls, messages, emails, and the calendar. According to HTC, you can get 15 hours of standby time on just 5% charge. These are the kind of solutions we need. The Sense 6 UI has been toned down a bit to fit the flat minimalistic look of Android just that little bit more. There's also an SD card slot now, and the best part is that you can't even tell. Double tapping on the screen now wakes the device, courtesy of LG of course. And when the phone is in landscape mode, the volume down button can now be pressed to open up the camera so you can use it straight away. Things like this show that HTC are indeed thinking and saying, what can we do to make this better? Or what can we borrow from other places? But all this being said, some things still do have a question mark over them. The camera is a great idea. Get away from the pixel race by using larger pixels. Ultra pixels, as HTC calls them. There are two problems with this. As some people may remember, on the HTC M7, photos turned out soft. 
that are pretty much useless for high res applications, such as PC desktop backgrounds or zooming in on a photograph to read some important text. I'd just like to add that for any 12 plus megapixel camera, the latter would rarely be an issue. In fact, you'll start hearing reviewers saying the same thing over and over again. The front camera seems to be clearer than the back camera. That's because it's 5 megapixels at the front versus 4 megapixel ultra pixels at the back. And that's the reason why. Post photo focusing is a great idea if it works well. It's interesting to note that both cameras can define a range for each individual pixel. So you can do some pretty cool things such as a 3D panning effect after you've taken the photo. If HTC opens both cameras up to developers, we could start seeing some very interesting applications for this. Apart from the camera, to my knowledge, HTC has pretty much left everything as it was on the M7 from last year. And that's a good thing. The screen on that device was pretty much perfection and the front facing speakers were a nice touch. So increasing the screen size to 5 inches and improving the speaker quality ever so slightly is definitely a step in the right direction. So I know a lot of you guys will be thinking, should I go out there and get this device? Well, I can't specifically advise you because I haven't had any hands on time with the device. But you can think about this. Not many people are talking about this point, but I think it's quite important. The Android game as of late has actually changed. The Android system requirements have actually come down for the first time in its history with KitKat. So a Snapdragon 400 phone with one gigabyte of RAM runs day-to-day -day OS tasks just about as well as a high-end phone. Gaming and web browsing, to a lesser extent, and other such intensive tasks is where you'll start to see the difference. What I'm saying is that the game has changed. You no longer need quad-core phones with 2GB of RAM just to have a good experience with Android. And that's why I didn't spend time on the specs in the beginning of this video. Specs aren't as important as they used to be just one year ago. So if you have a flagship phone from the past year and a half or so, I personally wouldn't see a reason to upgrade immediately. So thanks guys for watching till the end, that pretty much rounds out my thoughts on the HTC M8. I would definitely recommend it over the Galaxy S5 if you don't mind a softer camera and missing some of those multitasking features. As usual, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, comment and subscribe. Oh yeah, and if you missed out on the last video, it is the most mind-blowing video I've made thus far. Check it out. I'll see you again soon for the next video, guys. Cheers. The field of regenerative medicine is moving from the realm of science fiction to science fact. From fingers and ears to complex organs like livers or hearts, scientists at Wake Forest University are making headway into growing human body parts. Let's take a look. I'm a mate. I'm a mate. Mate.